Welcome to the Photos by Mikey podcast. My name is Mikey, the host of today's episode. Today, we're interviewing Mandy and Don, who is a mother and daughter team um, who owns the Nature of Things. They are a floral company um, in downtown Riverside. They are amazing. I've worked with them in the past, and I'm super excited to interview them and learn about their story. So welcome, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. So let's just start from the beginning. Um, so, so how did you guys start like the business? Like, where do you guys, you know, did you guys get involved in the industry? Like when you guys were um, in Riverside or like, just tell us your stories. Okay. Well, it started pretty much um, when Mandy was little with her brother. We moved next door to my parents who had acreage in Riverside in the Greenbelt area. And um, they still lived in our family home. And we had horses and all kinds of animals. And my dad gardened like crazy and shared his vegetables and flowers with the community. So they all loved him. And we just, um, people would come and tell stories about sweet peas and the more like historic flowers. So we decided we would start marketing that. And we thought we could make money at wholesale it's a lot harder oh. than you think it is. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's how we started. And then people became really interested in having us do, you know, small weddings and things like that. So that's how the interest started. Um, and then my dad unfortunately passed away in 2005. So that kind of came to an end, but it wasn't lucrative. So um, I ended up going to work for several high-end um, floral companies. Um, one was in Del Mar, another in Coronado, because we were living down in San Diego by that time. And then we moved back to Riverside and I worked for someone here in downtown that was very well known. Oh, awesome. So that's how it got started. And then of course, the kids always helped. Right. And right. Mandy has lots of stories about hmm. how <laughs> it's like child labor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Let's, let's hear from you, uh, Mandy. Like, uh, what was like your fondest memory helping your mom in the beginning? Um, mainly, I just remember growing up on the farm, you know, yeah. and just running barefoot, you know, and uh, rap shot. And um, yeah, it was just it was great just growing up around that and just helping out when I could. And I kept doing that, you know, every Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, big wedding, big weddings whenever she, you know, after she opened her shop and then. Yeah, it just slowly came to be. Awesome. Um, so when did you like create the brand, the nature of things? It was kind of in my mind um, for a couple of years when I was working for other people. And because um, Mandy's dad, um, he was very business minded. And so um, we had businesses then. So I would start to think because of that experience, I would start to think, how can I do this myself? Um, and I, at the time, the style was so different. There was no far farmer florist like there are today. It's mm. so wonderful. Our industry has really exploded. So having that farming background really helped. And there's a lot of different heirloom varieties that are grown um, and a lot of different materials when you have that kind of situation. Mm. So I started to think um, also production-minded to some extent, you know, how... I hate to say how I could do it better. I think it was just how I could do it differently. And oh. so that's kind of how it started. That's awesome. Yeah. What, where did you get that name? How, like, Where did that inspiration come from? There's actually a Greek philosopher that there's, um, it's a it's a book um, okay. called The Nature of Things and it's The Nature of Life and Death. So it's a very extensive philosophical uh writing on just all things in the universe and on earth and how it all relates and i think it's pretty unique i i wish i could have thought of something for my business that's more <laughs> not just my name you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it just kind of came to me and i i love um i love the phrase too because we use it in so many other ways most people don't know where that comes from so we use it in a lot of different ways you know, it's just the nature of things when you're talking about something that's not even related to to nature necessarily either, because it could be the nature of your business, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, when I first, I think, heard about you guys, I think I think I was just Googling, like, you know, 
flower vendors in Riverside. And I was like, oh, the Nature of Faith. That's a cool name. <laughs> Thank um, you. What did you think about that name, Andy? When, when... I mean, I didn't really have an opinion on it. It wasn't a loud one, I don't think. <laughs> I'm kidding, no. Um, I loved it. You know, it was yeah. very unique. Um, I like the fact that it wasn't, I, I don't know, just random flower company, you know, floral company. Um, and then her original business, um, when you had the farm with Papa, that it was Fiori Fine Flowers, which is flowers in Italian. So oh, wow. she's always had, cam you know, come up with unique names. Yeah, I think they, they, they being um, the advice is not to have um, mm -hmm. a business name that you can't pronounce mm. because we, we actually named it Isola de Fiori and that means island of flowers because of where we had our little flower farm it's not it, it's not as rural in that particular area so it's kind of a little ghetto <laughs> so it felt like it's I mean, in Casablanca so <laughs> yeah. well and people will come over and just come off the street and I grew up on that same property and then you know when we moved next door it became a larger property but it was very different once you went past the hedges mm -hmm. so to speak oh. truly there were hedges and then just people would just marvel at like how cra like we didn't even know this was here mm -hmm. right. and then my dad he he named his cornucopia farms which is way more like grassroots right, <laughs> I was right. like trying to be you know all I don't know, just sophisticated, I guess. <laughs> but it, that definitely fit him for sure. That, that's awesome. Yeah. So how long has it been now? How many years have you? That started in 2000 with my dad. Okay. So yeah, it, it was quite a journey, you know, going back to work. I went back into the construction and legal industry because that's where I started at some point. So um, it's a big leap to go from that industry into something creative. Right. And then you often get judged. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Right, absolutely. <laughs> like, you shouldn't. But I'm so glad because I'm so happy being able to be creative. And Mandy didn't actually join until... COVID, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was in Full construction. Anyway. Um, I was a grading engineer, like my dad and oh, wow. like my grandpa, um, my dad's dad, and then... Tim, my papa, her dad, was a grading surveyor. So it's I get it from both sides of the family. So I needed a job after high school and I joined and worked for eight years. And um, yeah, uh, I, COVID hit and then I needed a job. So I called mom. <laughs> I said, I need to pay my rent. And she said, come on over and just help, you know, until work fired back up until we figured out what was going on. You know, obviously yeah. no one knew what was happening in March of 2020. So. Right. Um, yeah, by November, I just committed to staying. So I was looking for a way out and I found it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we're glad because it's yeah. a hard industry Absolutely. and construction. So, so you said you were a, gra a graded? A grading engineer. Oh, so graded. I did dirt work. So the comparison I always make to people just so, you know, easier to follow them. So I don't have to sit here and like explain it too deeply. It's sure. just Tonka toys, essentially. It's life-size Tonka toys. Oh. So any, any of those yellow, um, like Caterpillar iron, mm -hmm. John Deere iron that you see on the freeway, any job sites you see, um, anything that moves dirt, that's what I did. Oh yeah, they, they got hit pretty hard, right? Cause... Really bad, yeah, yeah, it got really bad. Um, for a while, it picked up, um, I, I I think most of my friends and coworkers were back to work pretty quick, you know, cause so much money's invested in it that people are like, okay, we can't sit on our heels on this, you know, so right back to it, but. And you're but, outside too. Yeah, yeah, and you're outside, and so you, you won't, too. you know, have to be in, indoors with people, but. Uh, yeah, by the time it opened back up, I just said, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I had a taste of uh, work life um, out and just everything outside of it. And it was nice. So I never went back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how does it feel like, you know, like working in that industry and then working? How, like, how was it different from that construction oh, to now? Um, well, first, you're working with a bunch of burly, greasy, dirty disgusting men like just to be frank <laughs> who don't curtail their words at all so you really learn how to develop a tough skin and yeah. you know and deal with that um which wasn't really a big deal for me um just you know just kind of ignoring all that but uh yeah it was different definitely coming in i had to dress differently no more orange t-shirts and dirty boots and dirty jeans and uh, definitely watch my language. Um, that was a bad habit I developed out on the job site. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, just different. Um, actually talking, you know, talking to customers and yeah. really, you know, just uh, maintaining a sense of decorum, I suppose. <laughs> like that, that was that was the biggest change, I think. 
but yeah, I, I felt, you know, like I said, I've been helping her for so long that I just kind of fell into it and tried to, once I made it a habit, it was pretty easy. Gotcha, gotcha. So. Yeah, and you had been helping, like you said, for so long. Yeah, I think Slate it was labor. a pretty easy transition, <laughs> but then I made sure to make her partner. Yeah, because, oh, nice. She well, locked me in. I locked her in, but also it's like we have this argument when there's big decisions and we jokingly say, no, you're the boss. And she says, no, but you're the boss. Until she made me partner, and then now I can't say that as much. So uh, she's devilish that way. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to dive into that, into the dynamics between you guys, because since you guys are partners, right, in this business, so you guys have, like, you know, discussions or meetings when you have to, like, work on a project like who takes the lead typically like let's say someone hires you for a wedding like does someone take the lead or so from the outset um if someone inquires through our website instagram yeah. anything like that um we decide between us who's going to take that job and this is a system that we started up what two years ago yeah i want to say um mm -hmm. just because it, it just seemed like a you know streamlined mm -hmm. process um especially you know me staying on for longer or just permanently um right. so we manage our own clients uh from start to finish uh, well, you know, obviously I'll ask for her help in, you know, quotes or, you know, ideas or s design style or anything like that. Cause I'm still, you know, learning a lot of that and she's the expert for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we definitely handle our own clients from start to finish and, you know, just help each other out with anything in the meantime that we need. Well, I think we just decide on who, you know, who would be a better fit. For instance, we just got an inquiry today from a woman who's obviously a young woman who's obviously Irish. She has a very Irish name, mm -hmm. so much so we had to look it up, or Mandy did, to see the pronunciation. Oh, really? So when mm -hmm. she talks to her, um, and Mandy's background is Irish, um, so it was just kind of one of, the, you know, it had nothing to do with flowers, but it's like, oh, Mandy, you take this one because I think you'll be a really good fit for mm -hmm. her. And then we're also moving down into Orange County where Mandy lives. Oh, wow. And um, mm -hmm. we're looking to get a studio down there as well. So often it'll be, oh, here, here's one in San Clemente or Dana Point. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe this one should be yours. Yeah. Th that and kind I've, of thing. And I've lived there for, what, nine years? Yeah. So she knows now? the area really well. So yeah. she has a good rapport with people mm -hmm. um, when she meets with them. And, and then since she lives down there, she can easily meet, you know for coffee or yeah. you know just right. something meet them in person yeah. rather than th then oh my lord <laughs> than them having to drive out here or anything like that or conduct everything over the phone or emails it's easier to meet with people in person and sometimes people like that so when it comes to um yeah just uh san clemente and orange county area that's what i uh those are the ones i handle yeah so that's kind of how we do it that's, that's yeah that's awesome i think a lot of like family-owned business I always, I'm, I always find it fascinating because, um, you know, every client's different. Yeah. And so, like, I guess, like, some people connect with, uh, with other people mm -hmm. more of on different levels. Yeah. So I think it's kind of cool that you guys have different dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, working it, together. It is a really good advantage, I think, because sometimes, like you said, it's not that you don't get along with somebody, but you think, oh, I think, you know, mom would be a better fit for this mm -hmm. one. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I tend to handle the ones at the Mission Inn because I've worked there so much. Um, but yeah, it just depends. It's kind of a case by case, case basis mm -hmm. for sure. Awesome. Yeah. So are you guys opening another office or are you moving to OC? Another. Yeah, we're going to open another studio down there. Just oh, no nice. walk-ins or anything like that. We don't do walk-ins here anymore, but just a, a studio space to work out of. Yeah. So that yeah, way. So we have kind of a home base because mm -hmm. we're really interested in moving that direction. Um, Actually moving the business down there, but, you know, baby eventually, steps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, let's kind of take it back a little bit more um, from the beginning again, in terms of like how you guys, you know, develop the skills and, you know, the the business. Was it, what was like the most difficult part when you established the nature of things, like when you guys were building, like what was the most difficult part of like that time frame for you guys? I think um, I've always been very good at, um, like, my mantra is literally, I'll figure it out. So I've always been a very hands-on person um, and figuring out, um, you know, either being inspired by somebody else that I may see and we're getting more and more and more of that. I think that's the wonderful thing about the internet that is positive and IG. Um, there's lots of education out there. I think it's really important you continue to do that. But in the beginning, there wasn't much of that. So it was a lot of figuring it out on your own and having the confidence to try it out and figure it out. I think the hardest thing for me, 
even though I had, you know, done business with um, Mandy's dad, running his office and all of that, I think it's when you're doing everything and the back end is really a drag. <laughs> I mean, unless you're really yeah. business minded and that's really what your forte is and you just love the whole back end of business. Um, I would rather make the widgets yeah. <laughs> and then like, I'd rather hand that over, but you know, it, it, it's also makes you grow. Like the things that you have to do, you know, that you're forced to do, it helps you grow as a person and as a business person. So, but I would say that was the most challenging for me was keeping up with everything that needs to be done. Right. So you're, you're kind of like more into the creative side, right? Not yeah. as much to the admin. I am and not the, the numbers girl at all. And that's where <laughs> Mandy actually comes in. Um, she does really well with a more, um, what would you call it? A more regimented um, mindset, which is a really positive thing for the business. Um, our accountant gave us a number that Mandy had saved like so much in doing like flower formulas because I was just so basically like oh, just yeah, grabbing that, whatever she it'll saw. Be, it'll be enough. <laughs> you know, I would think it out, of course, but like I was so when she, when I don't stick to her flower formulas or the girls that are working with us. And it's usually because I'm the one not doing because the girls do mm. really well at it. She gets a little upset, like, and I no, get I it. Get I, I, I apologize <laughs> to her because the, well, that happened recently. And she's all, Mom, this one's short. And, when, and I'm like, it's fine. We'll just figure it out. And she's all, no, I spent all this time. So it's a really good um, partnership because of that. Yeah, and the, definitely. The flower formula is just basically what she means by that is, we have a an Excel sheet that I make for, it just tells you which, like how many red roses or how many white roses or whatever to put in each arrangement or each bouquet or whatever you're doing for a wedding. And that really helps you order your flowers and then you don't, you know, you don't overbuy. You're not spending more money than you have to and you don't have a lot of waste. So I factor in about a 3% um, on waste and then I just try to curb those numbers as close as possible. So. We're yeah, making as much money as we can. <laughs> and it's really, it's been increasingly difficult since COVID. Yeah, I mean, God, it's never yeah. been easy in the floral industry. There's People don't understand like mm -hmm. the tight, you know, from farm to wholesaler to right. the florist. Um, it, it, it's always been tight, but what did you figure we were just some talking, of our- Yeah, we were roses? just talking about a quicksand rose, which is like a beigey, mm -hmm. like off-white rose that is really popular right now. And it's beautiful, you know, and can't, can't deny that. But- but what, 2019, mm -hmm. um, is since 2019, since before COVID, it went up 350%. I did the math this morning. Holy so smoke. that's yeah. that's what we're facing with everything. Yeah. I mean, everything you can think of. And shortages and, yeah. for so long, we couldn't get anything in white. Um, I mean, it just all these issues like down in, the, was it Ecuador? They had, yeah, you know, South just America. South America, all over South America where the farms are, they had riots and protests and uh, flooding and just all these terrible things going on and then the hurricane in florida where you know they're miami's a huge shipping port not only for boats but you know also for you know uh airport the airport there right. brings in a lot of products and hollands and everything like that so when that was going on we saw massive shortages and then let alone the farmers trying to recover from covid and that's another yeah. thing that people really don't understand when they're you know placing an order with us just for daily stuff or especially with weddings and events we're like we got to put in our order with our wholesaler as soon as possible you know at least 30 days away from the date oh, wow. because we have to secure these flowers to make sure that we get them because we can't guarantee anything especially right now and our wholesaler does you know our representative sells amazing but there's only so much you can do you know and with covid putting the farmers on the back ends where they had to uh really like demolish a lot of their product in 2020 yeah. They, they're still recovering, you know, because people don't understand it takes time for the plants to grow. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you're not seeing a return very quickly. Yeah. And it's something you can't just go back into our warehouse and pull off the shelf. Right. And I think that's where um, coming from that farming background has always helped me. It's always been a substitution issue even before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but I think having that farming background, you, you just understand inherently that um, – when your rep, we use Mayash mm -hmm. um, here in Riverside um, and Sal, they're wonderful and they do everything they can. Mm -hmm. They they're major players in Los Angeles and so and they have many locations around the country. But when you can't get something, you can't get something. Yeah, like it's wow. you know it's wow. not because they're they just didn't pull it off the truck properly or 
it just didn't grow or there's all these things that Mandy just, you know, cited that are happening. Um, you have to understand that. So the best thing to do is the art of the pivot. And often we find when we add that we make those last minute ads off the flower market floor, things turn out so much more beautiful than right. the formula right. we had. Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Well, that's it's flexibility. So interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting coming, you know, asking you guys these questions because, you know, this podcast is about wedding, wedding photography and wedding, wedding mm -hmm. businesses. So because I've talked to, you know, photographers, videographers, makeup artists and planners. But I think a lot of people just don't know the, the back end of what happens in right. floral companies. And, you know, what you guys just told me is like for people that are trying to hire you guys as their, you know, as a vendor for the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys educate your clients? Because let's say, for example, you want this exotic flower and like there's no way you're going to be able to get it based off the factors. You know, maybe there is a drought or, mm -hmm. you know, transportation issues. Like, how do you guys approach that if you guys can? Basic, we basically just tell them what we told you. I yeah. mean, we're completely up front. You know, we just yeah. explain what's going on. You yeah. know, that there's not, there's really nothing that we can do. And, we, you know, we'll do our best and we'll look around and we'll try different wholesalers if our major wholesaler doesn't have something, definitely I'll call around. Um, I've right. driven out to Orange County. I have gone to LA. I've gone down to Carlsbad before. Yeah. So I don't, we don't have a problem with that, like outsourcing or really trying to source for something that somebody really wants. But just when it comes down to it and we can't get it, we just tell them exactly what we told you. I think we're ready when um, we know there's an issue. We make sure the communication is mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. You know, and that's number one. Um, it's number two, it's written into our contract. So <laughs> yeah. um, they've signed it. I don't. I know yep. a lot of people don't read that, but when we uh, um, go to uh, communicate with our client, we have a substitution ready to go and mm -hmm. a, a suggestion. Right. So we don't just come at them like, oh, we can't get it and sorry. We have a solution. And so I think in any type of business, that's really important for mm -hmm. your clients that you have a solution ready. That's why they hired you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I really want to get to know your your process or your approach to client, you know, um, services and your ex client experience. So can you guys walk us through on like from the beginning, like, let's say a couple calls you guys over the phone and inquires about your services? Like, How do you guys approach that from there to the booking process? Um, well, we start with a, just a questionnaire that, you know, if they want to call and discuss it over the phone, then happy to do that. Uh, they can, you know, also come in and speak with us. But I developed a questionnaire that we just ask what, you know, every question that we need to know in order to provide them an accurate quote as possible, um, a detailed mood board that we can communicate our style, our design, or, you know, and match what they're looking for, you know. Right. Um, and yeah, and we just, we sit down and talk to them. Then we put together a quote for them. We put together the mood board, make sure everything is kosher and looks good on their ends, that they're happy with the way it looks, the feel that we're getting, if we're really, you know, we're feeling their vibe. And then um, if they decide to book, then we go from there and there's constant communication throughout the entire process. Um, if they book with us, then we're in touch probably once a month at the very least, you know, depending on if they reach out, you know, and they have questions, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, happens quite often, which is totally, you know, what we're here for. But we, we typically touch base with people every month, two months, something like that. And then we reach out um, six weeks prior to the wedding or event date to go over everything with them to make sure nothing has changed. Because sometimes things will change and people will forget to let us know, you know, yeah. and it happens. There's a lot going on. Um, but we'll just double check with them, go over everything and just confirm everything. And then we place the flower order and we get cracking on the flowers the week of the wedding. So yeah, we, we also work with people in different time zones because we mm -hmm. do get international clients oh, right. um, or just, you know, different. Maybe they're on the East Coast and we're here on the West. We do um, have a wonderful um, proposal platform called Honeybook. I don't know oh, if you yeah, use it. Oh, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, yeah I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it keeps you so organized. But that we do have a questionnaire there for mm -hmm. people that maybe it's too hard for them to, like, communicate with us. Even though we do, like, prefer the phone, I think um, – that questionnaire really helps mm -hmm. um, to get on a good idea. But well, we have several options, people, yeah. several different ways to communicate and, and get the get their point across to us. Yeah. And I think the most important thing that it, I think offends people sometimes is asking for budget. Mm -hmm. So one of the um, the analogies I we both started to use was as a real estate agent, I'm not going to show you a $2 million home if what you're looking for is a $500,000 home, right? So yeah. when we ask budget, we're not trying to hit your ceiling. We just want to know, like, 
how much work we're going to need to put in the creativity of your budget. Mm -hmm. Or do you have this large budget and all the photos that you've sent us off of Pinterest, if that's realistic or not. So it's in no way to try to squeeze as much money out of them as possible. So I think that's really what we find Mm -hmm. really important. Agreed, yeah. Yeah, I think that's great advice, I think, for even other business owners, because I kind of do the same thing. I, I do provide a questionnaire to get a little bit more information about what they're looking for, even after, so I'll send to, you know, before and after, because mm-hmm. sometimes their their mindset changes, they mm-hmm. want some new ideas. But yeah, like understanding like the client's like budget range, because mm-hmm. even with photography and videography, I mean, there's so much things we can do. We can add more things if they want, or mm-hmm. they can reduce things like with video. So, uh, but also I think in terms of the budget, it also kind of like you were saying, like a real estate agent, you can kind of figure out exactly if they're really going to go all out or right. they just want something simple. Yeah, yeah. And it's right. just it's just like, give us an idea. That's yeah. all, you know, give us yeah. an idea. So, you know, not that it's wasting our time or anything like that, but so we're not spending four hours putting together a proposal, you know, for the photos that you sent that is like literally Kim K's wedding and you have a courthouse budget, which isn't a problem. Right. But it's like, yeah. if, if you can communicate that with us, we're not going to just blow it out of proportion and freak you out entirely. Yeah. Well, and we're not wasting our clients' time, Agreed. too. Agreed. That's exactly. Yeah, Very it's much. never Very realistic. Much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's creative things that you can do where you can put the focus on things that are more focal to the wedding. Right. Rather yeah. than, you know, I think that's just right. something important for people to understand. Mm-hmm. So for, the, for, like, the actual process of, like, making the flowers and all the arrangements like how much lead time do you need before the wedding to do that like really depends on the size the design style um you know different centerpieces that they have you know different types things like that but um yeah we'll sit we sit down the like at the first of the month Mm -hmm. we go over everything that we have coming up we get a game plan going um i typically schedule the employees so i have that all lined up for the month and then um yeah, and then we start typically like picking up the flowers um, at the start of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Say yeah. the wedding's on a Saturday. Yeah, um, it's kind of a hurry up and wait business. You totally gotcha. like you. You got to time it right so things don't start dying too soon. You know yeah, things yeah. like that. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll typically start working on everything Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for start sa- processing. Uh, yeah, for a Saturday wedding, and then um, we finish Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Sometimes, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> nature of the business, I suppose, <laughs> the nature of things. Um, well, so I yeah. think that's been really important to us over the last, I don't know, when I was first started, yeah. I was keeping insane hours because it was typical mm-hmm. trying to do everything yourself, um, right. which I think is a huge mistake. Um, in any business, you burn out. Um, but I would be working late at night, you mm-hmm. know, early in the morning. But I think we're really good. And I'm so proud of us for like staying. We almost work a nine to five mm-hmm. because we we schedule properly. We hire the employees properly. And it's our goal to get out of here no later than five. And that's for our employees' sake, too, because I've worked for what's known as a chop shop flower shop in the past. Mm-hmm. They, it was one that I only lasted six months at. And the way we were worked was just, I felt disrespectful to our lives. Like, there was no time right. for us to have a life. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that's any way to run a business or treat your employees, Agreed. much less ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I agree 100%. Even when I first started, I was working day and night. Mm-hmm. And eventually you find the right people that you trust and work for you. And you appreciate that. And so, like, you know, you don't have to work 12 hours a day. Now. Right. Like mm-hmm. You can just make sure you're organized and you get things done when it needs to get done. So you can have that balance, mm-hmm. you know, in, in terms of your, your work-life balance. Um, but let me ask you guys this, because I think it's kind of interesting because I have no idea how, like, you guys do your, you know, like the back end, right? Mm-hmm. Can you kind of, like, explain, like, when you guys get an order, right, for a, for a client, um, how do you guys source, like, the flowers how do you guys figure out how many staff do you need like is it just really based on the size of the wedding yeah based on the size yeah. of the wedding seeing if we can handle it ourselves um mm-hmm. and, and the other know. other the other events that we have because we do book things mm-hmm. like funerals okay. small parties right. or large parties or small weddings we'll or take on we uh, could have three big weddings in a weekend oh, you know wow. so 
Which uh, we try not we, to do. We, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we try we're, to only book like two weddings mm-hmm. a weekend because, you know, the clients deserve our time and attention as much as possible. But just say, you know, two yeah. big weddings and a small one, you know, yeah. say we have three that weekend. Um, yeah, we just sit down and we see, just go over each order and go over what each client needs and what we feel would, you know, what they need to feel atten- like feel like we're attentive to them um and and get the job done credibly and so then we just really just go from there it's a case-by-case basis for sure yeah and we also do we have an e-commerce site for daily deliveries even though we're no longer a walk-in shop right we don't um we don't have anybody walk in anymore Mm -hmm. it's all pre-orders over the phone or on our website so that has to be factored in as well oh that's right so we basically we do go to the market every day just to make sure everything's super fresh and Mm -hmm. then you know, on Wednesday, say we pick up our flowers for the mm-hmm. that week's events. We're also picking up for any daily, so it takes mm-hmm. you know a lot of organization and a flexibility <laughs> <laughs> while you're trying to you know cover all those bases. Mm-hmm. But we try really not to overbook because I think our mantra too is uh, quality over quantity. I've again that shop that I referenced was doing thirteen, fourteen, fifteen weddings a weekend. No, thank this, you. My. The, the, there were, hard pass. There was a <laughs> ma- so there was a maximum of no. there was a maximum of six or seven designers. Um, that is insane. Mm-hmm. And again, wow. I don't want to even live that design life, you know, because I think it affects. It becomes more of a cookie cutter situation, mm-hmm. which works for some people, but right, yeah, right. it just wasn't what we wanted to mm-hmm. do in this business. That's awesome. You guys are really just want to provide the best quality service and. Like unique and like, unique is mm-hmm. the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, because you want to, you guys want to stand out from everybody yes. else, and so you guys, I guess, are, are have an approach where it's more of like one on one base, where mm-hmm. it's like you have a small team, and I do kind of I uh, like that because it's kind of the same thing with my strategies. Like I, my team, there's, my, I have a small team, but all my team are uh, members are hand picked. They're, yeah. they're all local, and I trust them because I could build a bigger team, but it's like okay. Now it's like too much to handle. I don't want to do like 10 weddings a weekend, you know. So sometimes we do one or two, but that's the most. Like two is the most weekend. Right, agreed. Well, in that way too, like we say that, you know, each proposal, each process is like designed for the client in mind. You know, it's not... It's not a cookie cutter situation where we force them into that that mold. It's that we adjust, you know, the mold. It's our business mold to fit the client. So, and, and only doing, you know, certain amounts and you know, it helps us really contain that and control that. That's, that's awesome. Um, so what keeps you guys motivated in terms of like, you know, doing what you're doing now? Like, uh, are there any inspirations you guys? Paying my rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do love my apartment. <laughs> um, um, go ahead, Ma. Um, I think really... I've enjoyed watching um, the floral business in particular, but the wedding industry as a whole evolve. Like when I started, I'm telling you, everything was the same. It was the cookie cutter. Um, mm-hmm. So I've I've enjoyed seeing all the. Oh my God. <laughs> I've enjoyed seeing all the um, all the people that are willing to share information. I think that's what keeps me motivated is the mm-hmm. the continuing process of the evolution of of design and you know in the flower industry and the willingness of people to share their ideas we've we've um formed quite a really wonderful network of fellow florists when i started out in the business that would never would have happened really? people were secretive they were mean to each other mm-hmm. they would undercut people it yeah it was really it made me feel so bad inside <laughs> like i'm all sensitive and i just didn't like that so mm-hmm. that was one of my things when i did start um you know 12 years ago that i would never do that and when we had in, uh, employees come in and work that we would support them if they we have several that mm-hmm. have worked here and started their own thing and i think that's really important too is to support people in their journey yeah like you don't own them right exactly. and i just yeah. love that now and i just love that you know we we actually started a garden at the house 
to start growing again. So oh, I awesome. love that part of it too, just that evolution. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at her house, not my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have room. <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah. So we're just saying we're kind of coming full circle on that. But that's not to do what my dad and I originally set out to do with mm -hmm. Soho Cell. This is to augment yeah, that was our gnarly. business <laughs> and like have all these individual unique types of flowers that are going to augment our designs. Right. We're not expecting to like, we're not going to grow roses so that for that wedding for that we need 250 stems of white roses. <laughs> we're not expecting to provide that. We're right, going right. to be providing very unique elements. Homegrown. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much the main thing that I that motivates me besides <laughs> trying to, you know, and I feel like I feel bad saying this, but you feel bad for needing to turn a profit. Yeah. And I think that's kind of one of the downsides but we need to be able to do that so i'm working on that i'm enjoying <laughs> not feeling guilty about it yeah, yeah not feeling guilty about it that um yes we do enjoy our jobs but we we sacrifice a lot all of us right that start businesses yeah absolutely and uh, i want to get back to really quick and i'll touch yeah. base on another question about when about your staff right because i think it's super important that you support your staff and whatever they their goals are, yeah, you yeah. support. Them. If they want to learn from you, then um, you know, teach them, right? Because that's the same mindset I had when I first started. You know, photography is a lot of photographer. I reached out to all the local photographers. No one got back to me, yeah. mm -hmm. and it took a it took a while, you know, for me to start learning. Because for me, I was like, I want to learn hands on. Yeah, right. So when you guys take a staff member on. Uh, how do you guys feel when you guys mentor them and teach them the business? Like, how do you guys feel about that? Um, I, I love it. Yeah. I um, love it. And once they go out on their own or do side work, like they can, they can all, so many people have a key to the shop. Mm. So that you yeah. are. <laughs> it's ridiculous, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, no, and it's, it's nice. Great, but. <laughs> no, but it's like if you need something and we're not here, you can grab right. supplies that you may not you know have thought because you're working over at the mission Inn and right. oh my gosh i need this and mm -hmm. so we i mean i'm serious so many people have a key to the shop because mm -hmm. we want them to feel supported and you know it's we don't consider it a tiered system we're all equals mm -hmm. That's awesome. and we learn from other people as well we mm -hmm. have so many good flower friends that yeah. shout out to rainy from lovely ambiance yeah. oh, ambiance there we go she's, she's amazing she come we have her come in as like a 1099 employee kind of thing you nice. know she comes in as like an independent um contractor and just works on you know those big weddings i was telling you about and um, staffing wise and mm -hmm. she's incredible so you want to talk about an inspiration besides my mother, obviously. <laughs> um, definitely, yeah. I, yeah Rainy's she's, fantastic. And she's so sweet. And, yeah. And, and she's just one of those people that, like, will share knowledge. And I think that's really important. I'm sure with you, too. Like, it's so nice to have people that are open and sharing. And I feel that there's plenty of business yeah. to go around. And oh. it's important, too, hiring people. And, when you know, when we're mentoring them, like, teaching them, or we just hire them in if they already know what they're doing, is that we have to get along. You know, we have to like your vibe. Your vibe's <laughs> yeah. got to match ours because we're going to be stuck in this shop for like the yeah. next 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. And if we're not driving, this is, this isn't going to work out, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So, you know, as long as like, pe you know, we're cool and people are cool, then we get along. It's going to be great. It's all that matters. Yeah, I love that because like in the business, right? We, we want to make sure that the people we hire share the same values right. and, and passion we do. Because yeah. mm -hmm. then if we share the same you know, passion in, in my business of photography, it just makes things easier because right. we can talk about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I'm very open. I'll share all my knowledge to right. them. Like it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. I know like yeah. you may probably have your own business one day, but I'm like, I'd rather have you pursue that because you're helping me too. You're getting right. better yeah. when you're shooting for me. Right. Yeah. So it's all full circle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's there's a just some like something I always told the operators that I used to work with in construction is very much the same as yeah. what Don was saying about just how the flower business used to be. Like no one wanted to share information, very mm -hmm. secretive, that kind of thing. People were like that too out on the site. So it was something that I developed there and then carried into the business, you know, once I left and um, is that when someone's trying to teach you something, you know, and they come up and they're like, hey, like you can do this this way. And say you already know how to do it. Say it's something simple like mm -hmm. doing like two plus two, you know, or mm -hmm. something just inanely simple. Then right. don't ever say, oh, I know, you know, and like kind yeah. of brush them off. Because it's like, dude, if they're reaching out to you and they're trying to teach you, listen to what they're saying. Don't say I know. Don't act like you do because maybe you feel like you do. Okay, cool. Whatever. You can do two plus two. Awesome. Yeah. But 
but maybe that person is going to tell you a different, faster, better, easier way to do something. And even if they don't, they'll still come back later to teach you more if you're willing and like open to it. Well, and it can be a two-way street. We oh, have for sure. April, friend of the art of the STEM. Mm-hmm. We're going to give her art another shout STEM. out, but she's much younger than me. She's Mandy's age. Mm-hmm. She's wonderful, and I'm telling you, that girl is so smart that she teaches me <laughs> <laughs> just because she has an analytical mind. Yeah. and she's brilliant. She's coming in here. F- I'm right. sitting here trying to fix something. I'm like, I don't know how to do this, dude. And she comes in and she's like, oh, just do that. Like literally yeah, 30 seconds. So and I'm like, smart, though. it makes me so mad sometimes. I'm like, you know how long I've been standing here trying to figure this out, April? You're embarrassing me. <laughs> but it's but, cute. Yeah. I just like that. I just like that kind yeah. of two-way flow. Yeah. And it shouldn't be an age thing. No, either. but bouncing off each other and using each other's strengths to, you know, just get through it, really. Yeah. <laughs> just get through the day. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's awesome. Um, so... Let's get a little bit more specific about um, about your business. So I know you told me about uh, the new kind of move to OC, but what else is kind of like uh, new for you guys? Is, is there a new project you guys are working on or a new marketing strategy? Like what's next for your business besides the, the other shop? I think we're getting used to the, it's been this way since post COVID, mm-hmm. um, not having the walk ins. So that's a really mm-hmm. new thing for us. And then we're really nice. talk about work life balance. That, that has like been a game changer. I still, I think I drive Mandy nuts sometimes. So I'm like, a little bit. I love my life now because it's like a lot of stress to have, a, you know, a storefront. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that we did it for that time. But um, one of our really cool marketing strategies that we're working on on um that we've done many we haven't done any this year um but is are the flower flashes oh yeah what is that yeah. so a flower flash is um something that nobody pays us for we do these surprise um flower installations just out of the blue so around town yeah, yeah. just um can you, can you elaborate a little bit <laughs> okay so um like for i think it was two years ago we did um a, a for Pride Month, we did like a whole, you know, the rain, like the flag, just um, mm-hmm. like the whole inclusivity flag. And we did that up on the Riverside sign up off of Central and mm-hmm. the 215. I always get that mixed up because the 60s right the there. 60 and um, I always do that. Um, and then we also did one um, on MLK Day last year. There's a, a Martin Luther King statue mm-hmm. here on Main Street. Um, who is the woman who developed oh, the first orange Eliza tree? Tibbetts. Eliza Tibbetts. So a lot of the statues down on the main mm-hmm. street. We've, we've decorated done, a lot of them. We've oh. done the Cancer Society does a walk or mm-hmm. breast cancer up Mount Rubino. So we've done like, they, you know, just these surprise. We did something coming out of the trash can that day, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> that was another day. Yeah, oh yeah. So they're just, they're actually inspired by this really well-known designer, Lewis Miller in New York City. Mm-hmm. He does a massive ones that we can't afford to do, but um, that's how I was inspired. Um, for Valentine's Day, we did what's known as a flower spark on the stop sign. We didn't so not impede a flash, the stop but a spark. sign. <laughs> yeah, so we just did like this, like naturally growing. It just is really surprising, and people have a really positive, surprising attitude towards mm-hmm. it. That is so cool. I, I, if you guys have the photos, we'll post it on YouTube. Yeah, here yeah. As like we kept like all yeah. the photos. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. They're really fun to do because you do them at night. I don't like working um, where people are watching me. <laughs> so, you know, like at weddings, we make sure that by, by the time the guests get there, we're gone mm-hmm. because we want to set the stage and right. we don't want people to know the mechanics because it's kind of part of it, you know, the yeah. part of the magic. Yeah. yeah. Magic, yeah. So I don't like. I, and then I especially don't like that attention um, where when it starts getting light because we come before mm-hmm. dawn, we still have to be able to see. But right. you know, we're so we install where nobody is around, so they don't see us doing it. So just mm-hmm. one day because we did like the Ben Franklin. I was thing just going to say yeah um, for the women's march, and we showed up at like two a.m. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. To, we had to keep our head on a swivel downtown for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was great. Um, I'm I'm definitely a night owl, so that worked out. But I was very upset to have to wake up that early. <laughs> um, I thought I left that life behind me, Mom. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, so I know it's, it's, it's great. really neat to just see people like one, you know, that the night before it wasn't there, and then in the morning it's just there. suddenly just there. Yeah. There. 
Wow, man. Let me know when you guys do another one. Yeah. Uh, okay. I would love to maybe capture it on video. We're planning something. that big one over on that MLK statue. Remember, yeah. we've been working on the design on that for like probably a year and a half. So yeah. we're really excited we about have that done one. That for Black History Month. I know. If you have any suggestions, we're yeah, always totally. up for We ask our Instagram followers. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you guys have any ideas, like we're so open because we, oh, yeah. we just we love, love doing, them. doing yeah. them. Yeah, and we haven't had any fresh ideas lately, and I think we kind of just we haven't done one in a while. It's been yeah. probably six months, but besides the one on the random one on Valentine's Day, okay. but um, yeah, any ideas that that you have or anyone has, I mean, we're definitely looking forward to hearing from <laughs> yeah. it. So yeah. I, have a, I actually have a couple ideas already in my oh, head. Oh, nice! Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk later. All right, all right. This. I'm gonna pick your brain <laughs> for sure. That's something I'm excited about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah, that's amazing. So let's kind of talk about the mystique about you know the floor art industry because most of the time when I show up to the wedding, I I never see you guys. Usually, mm-hmm. you guys are like in and out. And yeah. I'm like, oh, magic! You just, you just show it up. <laughs> So what's one myth that you think, or one misconception about the floral <laughs> industry that I you guys want to share? Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think the, and I know people mean well, I really do. Um, but we hear, you can ask any florist, this phrase like makes us grit our teeth. Um, well, what is so hard about your job? You play with flowers all day. And so you want to do a field trip with people to like start from the very beginning of like what we have to do to get, you know, not just the back ends of like our paperwork and getting the job in the first place, but going to the wholesaler, sourcing everything, substitutions. Um, Let's not even talk about the labor day of, yeah, you know, some it's processing. Mm-hmm. It's a dirty business, mm-hmm. you know, washing buckets, um, toting buckets, they're heavy. You know, so yeah. um, there's that. And then it's the actual putting everything together before we even show up on site. The, you know, we we have all of this work we do at the shop. And then there's the setup on site. And then there's the cleanup. We're mess makers. We're the biggest messy mm-hmm. industry in the wedding world, I think. Um, so I think that's a big misconception. And then we often have to come back at midnight to strike, which mm-hmm. we're starting to use a third party company yeah. to do that. Oh, that's right. But yeah, any props and um, rentals, all the cleanup, yep. we have to come back. To so come back. that's right. And then day what? of, like we were just talking about the first wedding that we worked with together out um off, uh, out there. I can't bloody remember where it yeah. is, but uh <laughs> it was that that arch. When I came walking up, the fo- you know, and that's the other thing too, is like the misconception is like, oh, okay, it's not that tall or whatever in the photos that you get. I'm pretty I'm Damn yeah, good, actually, good about mind. judging size, because what I used to do for a living, you know, yeah. it was my job to right. measure and, you know, get distance and all this. So I'm pretty good at looking at a photo and, and guessing, you know, a, approximate size of something. But that one blindsided the, me. <laughs> the photo was taken more like this. At an angle. Yeah. And I showed up and that thing was twice as tall as I thought it was. It was and massive. it took us twice as long as we planned. And just the labor from that. And it wasn't a very cool day yeah. either. It was and pretty warm. It yeah. was pretty warm. So, it, you know, and that's yeah. also the you know, misconception of it, too. Like you're saying, it is very labor intensive. Yeah. Very labor intensive. And especially because I'm the younger one and I'm stubborn. I'm the one carrying, you know, long yeah. the, I don't, you know, I try. I'm not saying you can't do it, of yeah. course, but I don't, I try not to let, quote unquote, let her do like yeah. the heavy lifting. Because so it's like, dude, you're older and I'm the kid. Like, that's kind of what you had me for. So, yeah. to do the heavy lifting. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's really labor intensive. Yeah. And I think that's why it's really important. We, you know, we backed off of our, because I don't know why the industry standard used to be two hours. Maybe it just wasn't as mm. an extensive setup mm. as nowadays it is. Right. But we, our typical is three hours plus, depending on what we have to do. But the main thing is, is like not running behind because yeah. that, I'm sure you felt it. Like you didn't give yourself enough time or the yeah. traffic and you're just like, oh my God, the people are waiting on me and they're looking for me. And, you know, and that feeling is the most, it's the most horrible, unprofessional feeling in the world, like to not be on be time. On time. Mm-hmm. And we tend to run early for the times that you get to a venue and you're like, wait, what's happening? This is not. Yeah. We even went, we're given the wrong address to that one. Oh, my oh in L.A. No, oh, no, oh, no. It was in Norco. <laughs> it was in Norco. Oh, yeah, that one. That and of was... course, we went over everything. So oh, anyway, it was, it, it, it was able to be fixed because we had that three hour window. Yeah. Oh, Otherwise, we w- definitely would have been late. And we late. still yeah. had to, once we got to the. We had to hoof it for yeah, sure. Yeah, we wow. still had. But it was that feeling of like. 
working really fast. Mm-hmm. And but luckily we had that extra time. So I think that is also a misconception is that that is our day is dedicated pretty much mm-hmm. the entire day. Um, unless we have something really early in the morning, you know, we're there's a lot of back end to mm-hmm. what we do. It's not just the prettiness you see at the very end. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of things you have to do before days before mm-hmm. yeah um, i mean you guys individually like let's say there's an arrangement i mean you guys at the individually like prune every flower like is that roses especially roses. Yeah, yeah um lots of processing a lot of process yeah we processing where you strip the roses of you know the leaves and thorns um and then just depending on what we're using yeah. um it helps the longevity of the flowers if you pull the uh, the exterior leaves off, so all the energy yeah. is actually focused into the bud itself yeah. instead of you know whatever you're not using. Um, just good for any plant, by the way. If anyone's <laughs> listening to that, uh, if you see dying leaves, please pull them off your plants. Um, but yeah, it's it's that we for e- almost everything, ranunculus, freesia, yeah. it, we process it all. So instead of wasting time of opening each package as you go, you just reach over and grab that sucker, and then you're off to the races. So yeah, yeah we process p- pretty much everything. Yeah, before we it, before we know, even get started. Yeah, the yeah, day before we get started. Much less arrive on site. Yeah, because most of the structures nowadays, <laughs> back in the day, we would build like the centerpiece and just stick it up there when we arrive. But now we were, there are so much more natural designs mm-hmm. right. that they need to be built to the structure. Oh. So that's really important that we bring buckets at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, for the most part, that's how we install the arches and the, all the different, you know, mostly c- ceremony pieces. Mm-hmm. Or if we're doing an overhanging piece for a reception, that's all done. Got it. I, yeah. I do love the way you guys deliver some of the accent pieces, like, you know, the, um, what do you call that? The, the corsages. The corsages. corsages. Mm-hmm. You, you guys put everything in a little box, which is very nice touch. Wow. I think it's it keeps everything organized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's Labeling. Which I appreciate. Labeling. I'm, <laughs> Labeling I love everything is really that's organized. Important. Yeah. Even if you had to put groom and, you know, on or mother, nobody needs to be figuring that out. Because mm-hmm. exactly. that's the biggest problem every yeah. time. <laughs> We start taking photos, and then the mother's like, who's this for? Who's this for? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> or's the florist? <laughs> no idea. Oh, no, they're long. <laughs> <laughs> they're long. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, um, not that we take off as soon as we can, but like Dawn was saying, you know, we want to get out of Dodge. So people don't see us, yeah. but we also want to go home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have a long. Because that's the end of our week. Yeah, yeah. we, we like, want to go home. Week, so yeah. yeah, so that that's and also to make your job easier or you know the client's jo- life easier, just the label everything and just yeah. yeah communicate. Definitely talk to the wedding coordinator. Let them know what's going on. I think know. that is like one of the major things too. I know it's expensive, just like the whole wedding. Mm-hmm. Everybody's expensive because we work so hard, but having a wedding coordinator. Oh. Not a day of plan, not yeah. a day of coordinator. Day of coordinator is great. Absolutely fantastic, especially for certain venues where they know the ins and outs of their mm-hmm. particular venue. Awesome, right. definitely, for sure. But as far as planning your wedding, Definitely yeah. recommend getting a planner. It is I've heard it so many times yeah. when people try to plan their own, and they just they burn out in the first couple of months because they don't know what they need. They don't yeah. know what they're looking for even. Yeah. And having that person to steer you and also to calm you down from your like total mental breakdown that you will have, <laughs> yeah. um, they're it's worth it. For and they, sure. and it's always good because they recommend good vendors. Mm-hmm. You know that the, yes. they have relationships with that they've worked with before. Or, yeah. I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the most common, I think, regrets. A lot of yeah. couples that I've kind of like talked to that um, that have like, you know, kind of like a negative stigma yeah. from a, a bad experience, right? Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. I wish I had a plan. Yeah. I wish I had someone to coordinate my wedding because they're trying to do everything themselves on the day. Yeah. And like, they're, they're, they're the one, they're the point person that's like, okay, I need, where's the, where's the DJ or where's yeah. the photo booth? I'm like, you don't need to be taking care yeah. of that yeah. on yeah. the wedding day. No, no it's absolutely. so true. It's so yeah. true. And I'm sure you get it too. Like when you've got somebody that's like, well, I'm going to hire my uncle to do the photos. And you're yeah. just like, oh my gosh, please yeah. don't do that. Or have you guys ever had an instance where, or any experiences where they hired maybe the family friend to do the flowers? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then they're calling you 30 days ahead. Like they don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. It's too much. Or. Yeah that they're going to do half the flowers and they want us to do the rest. And that's yeah. something that we stepped away from where mm-hmm. we don't do that. It's in our contract that we don't, 
Yeah. yeah, we don't double up with um, family friends right. or or family members or just any other florist because, you know, everyone's work is different, yeah. you know, and yeah. we don't need, you know, someone else's work represented as ours, which, you know, take credit for theirs or vice versa or whatever. But it just it's really sticky when you start throwing in yeah. different um, vendors of the same trade. trade. Yeah. yeah. It starts getting yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Especially family again. members, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, hard, I remember one in, one in particular that will forever stay with me <laughs> was the exact difference between a toffee rose and a cappuccino rose. And she used to do flowers and it oh. was painful. <laughs> she tried to educate you on uh... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, a lot. She ended up being really, really nice. She was a great client of ours. Yeah. I think I've, once she realized that she can trust us, that, she, that we knew what we were yeah. doing, she calmed down. But at first I... I was pretty intimidated by her, I got to admit, because I had just started with you yeah, like full time. Yeah. And then, you know, I never really had that intensity aimed at me before. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I mean, and I, I'm sure we have to go on with the questioning, but I think one another misconception is um, colors don't have to exactly match. Agreed. I think it's a matter of gradient and shading. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you understand, I've learned so much about color since I started. Same. Um, and so I think um, when you, as you know, computer screens mm -hmm. look differently than in real life. Right. And then they look differently than this and yeah. your flower. So you need to understand there are variations in growing as well. Nature is not exact with their colors. Like right. one grower will have it's it's close enough, but we learn to to have more of a gradient of color. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not back when I got married back right. in the eighties. We used to dye our satin shoes She's to match our dresses. Herself. <laughs> totally, I don't mind. But you know, <laughs> back then it was like matchy match, and mm -hmm. that's right. our brides today are so much more eclectic and open minded, yeah. mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that. Occasionally, we may get a bride that just doesn't yet understand that that color is not the exact color from your computer mm -hmm. screen that's going to come out and it's okay. That's a, it's that's, really okay. I think that's good advice. I didn't know, you know, I mean, I, I didn't really think about that, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because, I mean, a grower might have like a different shade of red for this flower or, yeah. or and, and doesn't plants kind of change after like a couple, like the, the Yeah, as the, as the age, they t um, many colors do tend to change. And they, I think that's true, like if, say if someone wants an all red wedding, that's mm -hmm. a good color. Mm -hmm. We like to use a green, like several different mm -hmm. shades of red. It's more interesting than just one color of red in your flowers. It yeah. causes depth. That, that makes sense. Yeah, like, so there's a lot of interest that's mm -hmm. added with shades of color, of the same color. Right, yeah. and like you said about their growers, they'll, you know, say two different farms have the same, they bought the same like rose, um, like bulb to right. begin with. That it's the you know same type is labeled as the same type, say a freedom rose, but you see two different types at the wholesaler. They're from two different farms, the yeah. same type of rose, same different just grades, different just different grades. It could be the different soil, it could be anything that yeah. changed the color just very slightly, and it's not the same, but it is the same name. But it's okay because we can mm -hmm. make it work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just trust us, we can yeah. do it. <laughs> well, and it's knowing like the different grades right. of flowers as well, especially Agreed. roses. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you see these um, signs for roses, the, a dozen roses for nineteen ninety nine, but they're like this big. So yeah. that's some of the, the things that we know that how to get the different grades. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. I, that's great. I think you know people that are trying to hire a vendor. That's something that is great advice. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, most people get married for the first time and they have yeah. no idea. Yeah. What to do, and that's what you know. We talked about the planner thing mm -hmm. and um you know i had a had a previous conversation with the planner like a couple a couple days ago about some of the um misconceptions about weddings like for example like does all the bridesmaids have to wear the same dress right like right. no they don't have to wear the same dress it's better if they don't if I the know. picture i think yeah. the pictures turn out better i do too yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly or do they have to have even number of yeah. right. bridesmaids and groups like no yeah like, yeah they can do whatever they want. You know, right. I think it's so pretty, and um, it was such a faux pas to not wear white other that than the too. bride. But I love when the bridesmaids all have white or varying shades of white or neutrals, and the bride also wears white. <laughs> Oh yeah, just I something you know, so non-traditional is cool. Non yeah, yeah, I it's really cool. like that. I love working with clients. Like Agreed. That. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, let's go back to the questions a little bit. Um, so let's start with let's start with Don. 
Who are the three people that has been the most influential in your life? Uh, yeah. Business wise, of course. <laughs> it could be personal too. Yeah. Well, actually, I have to start with my dad for sure. Okay. My my mom and my dad. I talk a lot about my dad, but my mom was just as involved in the mm -hmm. growing and. Um, so, yeah, I think for sure um, just his dedication and just how he was in the neighborhood and really, like, was very open and, you know, just so, so giving, so generous. Um, in the industry, there's um, Florette Farm, Erin, um, her name is. Um, I followed her blog since she was taking, like, actual physical photographs and posting them on her blog. She has grown exponentially. She's oh, one wow. of the foremost flower farmers in the country. They're in the Saget Valley. So that's so inspiring. Um, so many des designers, I mean, I can't even name them all. Um, right now we're doing a course with Flowering Minds. They're an online continuing education and so much good advice on how to stay um, courageous in your business, stand your ground with your pricing, because you know your worth, keeping your worth um, in your mind not doing things for free because you devalue yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a lot of um, mostly women um, that I admire. Um, it's not because I think it's just so many women in the industry. Um, Lewis Miller, he's out in New York City. We referenced him for very much admire him. Uh, Lucy, the her business in her book, um, Lucy, the flower hunter, like she does beautiful backgrounds, and that's a big thing for me that I've been struggling with. We used to paint this wall over and over again, and Mandy <sighs> was so tired of it. <laughs> I would be like, and it would only take me 20 minutes to roll because I wouldn't cut in, but Not she's sure been a crazy. huge, huge influence. Um, yeah, so that's to name a few. That's like, awesome. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Mandy? Uh, I definitely say, you know, my mom, obviously. Um, <laughs> I slipped her a 20 yeah, before the <laughs> And I better say it so I don't get whacked later. Uh, <laughs> no, on honestly, uh, I love you, mom. You've been a huge inspiration to me. Um, uh, yeah, my dad, you know, um, they both, my mom and my dad taught me how to, just how to work hard, put your head down and just, you know, get to it kind of thing. And um, yeah, I, my parents are definitely a huge inspiration to me. My stepdad's a big inspiration. Great guy. Um, he works hard too. You know, always willing to listen and give me a few life lessons, whether I want them or not. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, just yeah, I look up to quite a few people in my life. I'm lucky to have them around. That's awesome. Um, so th these are pretty interesting questions I'm going to ask you guys. Um, it's it's kind of more personal, but it, it's kind of cool. So let's start with with, uh, with Don. So if money was an option, let's say you have like five million dollars in the bank. Sounds nice. Sign yeah. me up. <laughs> would you still have the shop, and would you still be doing flowers? Yes. Um, I've thought about this a lot actually, and Mandy and I talk about this a lot. So we would someday like to have a venue um, that where where we don't again we don't do a ton of weddings but we would exclusively do the flowers um and then we'd be very um i would give new people a chance but we would also vet our vendors at the same time but i think giving new people a chance is really important um we but uh, mandy grew up with horses i grew up with horses we had them until recently so i think we would want to incorporate that into the experience of like I don't know. I just picture this very <laughs> beautiful role situation where people would almost have like where you could have like um, people come and stay in your little cottages. So it would be like the full experience. So that's the business side of things oh. um, that we kind of would incorporate living on the property um, and the flowers and growing some of them yet again, not all of them. But we would also hire people mm -hmm. to do all the yeah. hard work. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, that's what I would do. Um, you know, if I if money weren't an, an object, awesome. yeah. How about you, Mandy? I mean, same. We talk about it a lot, yeah. um, and I think I would write and I would travel yeah. a lot more. I would travel also. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, I would travel too. But man, yeah, Mandy's a really good writer, so I think that would be. Something that I would be really cool to be able to focus on to, more to pursue. Yeah, for sure. that's awesome. I think when you know when we start a business, you learn so much. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, from like just everything from learning from other people, 
learning from yourself, like mistakes yeah. you make. So mm -hmm. yeah. it, it kind of leads me to my next question. Yeah. So Don, like looking back at your younger self, like, you know, when you first started, what advice would you give that younger Don um, back then? Don't try to do it all yourself. And it is hard because we, I started on a shoestring literally. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard, it's such a hard balance, but trust the process. Um, also, trust what you're worth. Trust your worth. And when you trust your worth, you can hire people. Right. I mean, you still have to work really hard. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You're not going to get away from that, when, especially when you're working from the ground up on a business. Um, but yeah, I would say trust yourself more. Trust your gut instincts. Um, be, be, don't be afraid to turn down a client very gently if it's not a good fit trust your instincts i mean we still sometimes with that we need to right, right. stick with that mm -hmm. like and just refer them somewhere that them, they would be happier so i think it's mainly just trusting yourself and hiring people to help you even if it's just part-time or an assistant it can really i mean i i think this business is growing so much better now that mandy's here full-time mm -hmm. Um, and we're still, we still are very particular about when we hire and when we don't. That's awesome. But yeah, having a second person is, can't even tell you how oh, much yeah. that means. <laughs> right? I mean, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to kind of, kind of tweak the question for you a little bit, Maddie, okay. just because, I mean, you were working in a grading company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in that construction business. So like switching from that business to now, like, would you would you change anything? Like, no. Yeah. No. Um, sometimes, you know, driving down the freeway, you know, I'll look over and I'm like super interested. I'm a totally <laughs> nosy, totally nosy. So I'll look over and be like, oh, what are they doing? You know, and I see, you know, those are making a back cut or something. I'm like, oh, I know why they're doing that. You know, they're doing that to build the pad or blah, 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 yeah, you know, right. whatever. And it, like, I like knowing that, you know, and yeah. it's cool to like see, you know, and that's about as close as I want to get to it. I, I put my I put my time in. Damn it, I'm done. <laughs> no, really, I I wouldn't change it at all. I really love working with mom. I love the That's you know awesome. the schedule that I have now. Um, you want to talk about work life balance? My lord, I never had a work life balance when I worked in construction, not once. I mean, in ten years. So this is a huge change for me. And no, I definitely wouldn't change anything. That's awesome. So I know you guys work very hard, and you guys have you know probably sometimes busy schedules, right? Like, what do you guys do for like rest and recovery? So let's start with Don. I think um, closing the shop to walk-ins is again, I know I keep reference, referencing that, but it has been so important um, to start to achieve that work-life balance and taking Mondays off because it's like you, mm -hmm. you're often working weekends. Yep. And so you might only get that one day off. Mm -hmm. If but, that sometimes. It, like, um, yeah, it's we just had a couple of weekends where we didn't have to oh, work wow. the weekends. So we got a three day weekend <laughs> and it was awesome. just like luxury, you know, but I think um, we really unless something comes up, you know, we're not, we're, we'll, we will make an exception every once in a while for maybe a funeral that's mm -hmm. really important to somebody and they're a good client. But we really, really treat that Monday as sacred mm -hmm. and that. I think that's so essential. I to, love having my yeah. Mondays suck as it is, so yeah. being able to stay home for him has been really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's protecting that that time. Um, mm -hmm. And we both love our homes and where we live, and so mm -hmm. we're, we like being home. My husband likes being home. Um, you know, we could like to go out and do things as well, but I think that's really important. Is just that downtime and giving yourself the permission. That's another advice mm -hmm. to my younger self because I was a type A mm. and I'm no longer that person. It's a constant need to please, a constant need to be moving and doing and doing it, and you burn yourself out. Got so it, I think it. like giving yourself the permission, I think our industry and um, is changing that, I hope, or this generation, your generation, is it's okay to say I took a day off. Mm. It's okay like to have time to yourself. Because I think sometimes it's an unpopular opinion right. and people you feel looked down upon or judged. And I think we need to stop that. Got it, got it. That's, that's amazing advice. Um, so how about you, Don? Like, what do you do after like a long weekend of working? Do you uh, just watch Netflix all 
Always. Depends. <laughs> it really depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. Honestly, um, whether it's football season or not, that's a huge factor. Um, I, I love sports. I oh, love, awesome. you know, soccer, football, baseball, the whole thing. So, you know, if something's on, I'm going to go watch with my friends, go over to my friend's house. We cook. I love to cook. So, um, yeah, like right now I have um, one of my best friends. He just moved in next door to me, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, he comes over every Sunday and we watch The Last of Us and we cook. Oh. <laughs> and we cook dinner and we just hang out and watch. And then he, I like, get out. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just really, I chill at, at home. I um, I do live at the beach. I'm not a big oh. beach goer, um, which is weird. I know I'm there for the weather and the view. Um, but yeah, I just, I hang out with my friends, you know, we go do stuff. We go try new restaurants. Um, I hang out their house. Uh, I cuddle my cats sometimes for too many days on end. Um, so it really just depends on what's going on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And she allows that to be my escape every so often. Yeah. We, we plan a weekend wow. where I'll go down because mm -hmm. I, her town is, have you, you've obviously been to like San Clemente and all of oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so adorable. It's beautiful. It's so adorable there. And she has a lot of good friends. So it's always really fun. It's always something to do. Yeah. And so <laughs> many good restaurants. Oh, yeah. So that's many. the other, it's a problem, honestly. Yeah. My wallet screams at me too much. <laughs> I mean, it's just, they're so, it's so good. I'm, I'm a total foodie, so. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The weather, I mean. Yeah, you yeah. can't beat it. Not I, and alone. <laughs> honestly, during the summer, like, I grew up here. You know, I lived here mm -hmm. until I was 21. Yeah. So, and I'm 30 now. So, mm -hmm. um, when, I don't know, just leaving here in the summer. I'm like, bye, ma, see ya. <laughs> and she's just like, you know, I just leave her in my dust. I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm and, running after the <laughs> <laughs> For real. I'm driving away as so fast as I can. <laughs> there there can be a serious 20 to 30 no, truly, degrees in the high heat of the summer. I, yeah. Like, I'm looking at the weather, and I'm like, I cannot believe that it just can be that different mm -hmm. only an hour away. But it's true. It can't be. <laughs> yeah, the drive the drive isn't great, but I do it for the weather. <laughs> Definitely do it for the weather and the view. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so if you guys had to travel to one place that you guys have never been to, where would it be and why? That's what would would done. Me first? Yeah. Well, I've wanted to go to Europe my whole life, and for whatever reason, I just haven't gotten over there. So I would say pretty much anywhere in Europe, but my my focus always had been Italy. And now that I'm married to someone who loves Roman history, I think that would be definitely, you know, because I hear that you need to go and spend time and mm -hmm. don't try to go too many places. Because once you go, you're going to come back. So I think if we would be able to just take a couple of weeks just we would stay in Italy to start and really soak up the local culture and you know I'm not a big runner around I don't want somebody during my vacation to have an a itinerary <laughs> do I task hate task. that don't you guys yeah. see I Awful. don't want to know when the parachuting's happening I just like I'll get there if I get there I want to <laughs> be able to walk and essentially leave me alone yeah <laughs> <laughs> or just like do things on the fly yeah. that's way more, more my style mm -hmm. what about you Mandy Ireland for sure. Oh yeah. wow. Um, I'm big into my like family history, like, you know, just genealogy. Like I really haven't like delved into genealogy so much yet. Uh -huh. That's something I really do want to do. But I'm like I've always been fascinated by the Irish culture and just my family's history. Um and I've always I'm I'm a super nerd, total super nerd. Lord of the Rings, rock on. Um I'm just like I'm ridiculous, honestly. Um, but I've always been really, really fascinated by like the Celtic culture and again, Joe and I, um, mm -hmm. Don's husband, my stepdad, yeah. we talk a lot about, you know, Roman history that he's fascinated with. And I'm coming around, you know, talking about, you know, the Celtic history with meeting the Romans and everything like that and the invasion. <laughs> and I just, I'm fascinated by it from start to finish. So I would love to go. Um, I've always wanted to see Trinity College in Dublin, oh. their library there. Oh, it's enough to make me weak in the knees. <laughs> so I've always wanted to go. Yeah, fascinated. Have you ever been to Europe at all? No. Oh. I, I've never been west of, or sorry, Lord. <laughs> I got turned around. <laughs> Can't go any further west than I am yeah. <laughs> unless I drown. But um, the furthest east I've been is Montana. Okay. So I really haven't done a lot of traveling. I've been working a lot. So <laughs> I know. I think <laughs> that's something that changed too. Yeah. Like that's another advice. <laughs> it's like do it now. Mm hmm. Don't wait because yeah. you think you have all this time and don't. Especially, 30 came quick. <laughs> well, and especially my dad died at, at 56, and like that's two years 
wow. my age right now. Wow. And we didn't expect it. He was completely mm -hmm. healthy. It was yeah. unexpected. So uh, from that point on, from 2005, like I, my whole mindset changed mm -hmm. um, about how much time we have. You, you don't have, maybe you do, but you don't have as much time as you think you do. So uh, I think travels big part of our human experience oh yeah like just going to a new place even california there's yeah, so many yeah for sure there's yeah so many beautiful places mm -hmm. yeah i still haven't been to yeah well like we tried we went to oregon during covid you know none of us were working she wasn't i wasn't my stepdad wasn't yeah. so we we're like hey like might like, as we well drove. yeah so we, we drove the dog <laughs> we before we got the basset hound we took mabel the pit with us up to oregon she did great um total car dog but uh yeah, we drove up the coast and it was Portland. something yeah. it was something i wanted to do i was like hey like um why don't we drive like through big sur and everything i've always wanted to see it i've yeah. grown up in so socal gorgeous. i've lived here my entire life and i've never seen big sur it's like it's offensive almost. it's criminal so it was that was amazing and wow. we drove by hearst castle and like all of that yeah it was really really yeah. cool to just to see you know more of just more the coast and yeah, and yeah. seeing um the coast in oregon too just how different it was and you know forest right all the way up to the sand i mean just oh it doesn't yeah. i can't even i still can't even make sense of it but yeah i felt like i was at home there because i grew up in riverside mm -hmm. and i am dried out like a lizard <laughs> when it's i so got to oregon I, even my hair like was wavy and all like yeah this is our home because it was it was in the winter yeah but the climate is just more to oh. my liking yeah. but yeah but Cal yeah i like you said so much so much to see in california um i mean i'm not the biggest desert person but palm springs is cool in its own right yeah. you know yeah. it's like just yeah. it's just certain times it, of the year and it, the whole socal challenge thing like where else in the world can you jump into the ocean in the morning drive to the mountains and sorry and snowboard in the afternoon and then go to palm springs for dinner like get out of here like yeah, yeah. it's crazy california's best state in the country yeah. i don't care <laughs> i've never done all three things but i've hiked up in big bear and yeah all the way to the beach later in the evening that's so, so it's crazy like, crazy right yeah. yeah my friend and i we were talking about doing the socal challenge in april yeah. once it like thaws out a little bit where you yeah. know when it's is not that like, a thing yeah no, it's a thing. yeah yeah hit it hit the beach in the morning uh ride the slopes in the afternoon and then desert for dinner that is awesome yeah that's awesome like there's so much so many just, places to just visit and travel mm -hmm. like i personally like going to like museums because yes as a photographer it keeps me inspired yes like huntington library mm -hmm. like, oh you know, one of my favorite all places. the paintings mm -hmm. the, yes. the statues like i mean looking back at paintings too it's like how did they think of like you know the sh the, the lighting the lighting I mean, like, yeah they had no lights they had to use a window light yeah. yeah they had to figure that yeah. thing out now we have like lights everything yeah but so like i kind of sometimes introduce that into my style mm -hmm. yeah. um, and inspires me so yeah but but yeah like that's i agree with you guys like the past two years i've traveled a little bit more mm -hmm. you know i still have been to hearst hearst castle we went last year to um solvang oh yeah oh cool so first, there. first time and then we went to um more bay oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was beautiful. incredible so i'm yeah. also like total like geology nerd um yeah. comes with the territory um but that Morro bay yeah. i pulled over i was like yeah. i'm pulling over yeah. and i have to look just look at this for a second to figure out like how did this even happen like yeah. you know through the ages and everything i'm fascinated by that uh, <laughs> That's i so love crazy. northern california <laughs> do, you, do you like the getty like the getty oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've been I've have been... you been to the villa that's one thing I still haven't. Um, the villa is cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta make a visit because I've, I've been going to the, the Getty Museum ever since I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. High school. That's kind of how I got into the creative space. Mm -hmm. Um, actually love drawing and and um, you know, just I did a little bit like sketch sketching. And then eventually I got into photography. But when I visit, visited the Getty, I was like, oh, my God. It's, yeah. There's just. It's amazing. I, it's amazing. Looking back at, like, you know, the history. Yeah. Of how even here in Riverside, the 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 museum here in downtown. The, the, the photography museum. Yeah. Photography, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 It is really cool. So, yeah. But, but yeah, like, that's one of the things that I think a lot of people just, you know, when you start a business, you're you have to make a living yeah so mm -hmm. you're working like day and night yeah trying to make ends meet and then so you don't really think about like okay i'm, I'm gonna make a trip to hawaii yeah. Like, right yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta work yeah weekend. i mean that'd be nice yeah. let's not get that twisted but <laughs> well, yeah there's a, um, a really great her name is julia cameron and she um wrote a book called the artist's way and it's basically a workbook 
And she, I recommend it to anyone. Mm -hmm. She has you do morning pages, which is journaling in the morning. Um, so there's a whole philosophy behind that. And then she also has these things called artist days. Mm. Um, she was, she's a film writer, so okay. it, it goes across all dance, everything. She right. incl includes everything. But an artist day is something you do to refuel yourself. Mm. And it's only for you. Like you don't, you can go with people, right? But it's you don't do it for work necessarily. Mm -hmm. But it it helps us rest and refuel. So I love that concept. That yeah. if you can make it to where sometimes we need to be told it's going to help your business, <laughs> and then we give ourselves the permission. Right. But it's one of her things that's um, I think so inspiring to um, really make sure you do stuff like that for yourself. Because yeah. it does, you don't know when you're going to be inspired. A a absolutely. That's awesome. That's great advice, actually. I may have to take, take you up on that. <laughs> I need to do more of it myself, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, since you guys have been doing this for so many years, right? So, if you guys had to give advice to someone that's kind of interested or want to get into the business, what's maybe a couple advice you would give that person that is interested in getting to the industry um flowers are way more expensive than you think mm -hmm. and price yourself accordingly truly but if they're just trying to break in like i yeah. would do i would do workshops because mm. there's so Sorry, many different levels <laughs> so many different levels of workshops out there that you can see if you really want to do it mm -hmm. without invest and don't spend too much because there's some beautiful retreats mm -hmm. that cost thousands of dollars that i would love for mandy and i to be able to do and you travel there and you you know meet spend a week there or whatever yeah it's wonderful and those are if you can afford it for sure mm -hmm. go but there's so many local like we even do um it's like a one day workshop we often mm. will do we've only done a few now but oh. we're, we are planning to do some more of those in the future but uh, you know even something like that you can decide whether you really like doing it mm -hmm. before pursuing it so workshops, I would say, would be the number one That's thing. And there's just so much online education. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, like that Flowering Minds, that's mm -hmm. our latest. And, I mean, we're learning new techniques all the time. And I think it's really important that you stay up on that that's, that's once awesome. you enter the yeah. business, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, but um, I – and maybe work in a flower shop, too. Cause yeah. Then, learn the basics. Learn. Yeah. Go, start from the ground up, you know, learning, like, how yeah. to process flowers and, like, what – each what the name of each flower is and like how to care for them the best to ensure like ensure longevity and yeah yeah because some some don't like to be in the cooler like others mm -hmm. um they're more warm weather you would leave them out to open some right. need to be in the cool you know that kind of thing and it's realizing that it's all it's not all just playing with flowers you know there is weirdly a science to it. <laughs> yeah. And there and we we have to be somewhat I mean, I want people to be creative when they're working for us. They we do need some production. Right. You know, right. like we kinda need you to step it up, you <laughs> yeah. know. And I if you get into a situation like that where you're working there, you can decide, uh, you know, this really isn't for me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, because I in my case, I you know, a lot of like younger photographers reach out to me and they want to assist me and they, you know, they ask my advice for wedding photography. I was like, well, you know what? You can come on and just assist for the day and see if you actually really like it. Because you can yeah. watch all the YouTube videos you, you can out there. Yeah. But actually being on site, yes. you know, and dealing with issues. Yes. Last minute, dealing with you know family friends yes. i'm dealing with a lot of people on the wedding day yes and, and when they're stressed and the stress and you're, yeah. you're on like a time constraint yes i mean that alone right there like i mean for all of us it's like we got to get things done yeah now like yeah can't be like messing around so like yeah. if that's not your personality where you're, yeah. you're kind of like easy going sometimes you have to learn that things are on a timeline yeah right? mm -hmm. for sure yeah. yeah you don't have all the time to like be practicing the perfect shot and the <laughs> you know that that kind of we've had that a few times here mm -hmm. where you're watching somebody and you're like girl could you pick it up <laughs> you know and we don't want to like, insult anybody insult make it, them or, feel bad but yeah but it's like you know no i think that's it usually also, my it's, job <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of knowing the culture it's getting right. to know the culture that mm -hmm. you can't necessarily learn from a book or explain to somebody exactly. they just have to get the vibe mm -hmm. you know if we're all hurrying around i think you need to hurry around too <laughs> absolutely um one of the questions i personally had was 
Um, so after you guys finish, like setting everything up, and then you guys sometimes have to come back, do you guys repurpose the, the, the flowers? Yeah. What do you guys do with the flowers? So a lot of people the take them home. Flashes. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people take them home, you know, okay. which um, is we encourage great. That. We encourage it because it's just a lot less work for us. Um, when we have gotten a lot of flowers back, like say we have to break down an arch, like that big one we did, yeah. um, and they're like loose flowers. It's not in like an like not an arrangement, but like a cage. Um, we didn't break that one down though. Oh yeah, that's right. Some people don't want to pay for it. Yeah, so I'm the, glad we didn't break that one down. That the venue it. has to know that they're mm. that the venue is responsible. So right, but if we have like say yeah, we have all the loose did. flowers and everything, we've taken them down to the um, nursing home down the street mm -hmm. um, okay. before. Yeah, so just really. Flower flashes, things like that. Just that's awesome. whatever's quick and easy to yeah. be honest. We've put flowers out here before. And oh yeah, just like for buckets. free. Yeah, P please leave our bucket, but you can have the flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, just uh, that's. Oh, well, the free bouquets. We did that for a while too. Like oh, yeah. we'd wrap them in you know nice paper, and then we go leave them downtown somewhere and just put a tag on it. Said like free bouquet, like help yourself kind of thing. First come, first serve. Yeah. So yeah, just whatever really comes to mind. That's awesome. Amazing. Um, well, I guess the last question for you guys is like, in terms of um, the business, right? What what is like your been the the most important thing you guys have learned over the years from from the business? Like, is it something that you guys learned from someone, or is it just trial and error? I think for me, it's been resilience. Mm. It's just if I had to put it into one word. It's just been super resilient. And um, because we all have bad days, or yeah. days where I just think I can't go on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> what, what, do, what do I say? I don't want to play flower shop anymore. <laughs> um, but I think it's just, um, you know, sticking that out um, yeah. and just being super um, resilient and- Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, and flexible. Mm. If I learned, I used to, again, because I had more of an A-type personality, I was, my kids taught me a lot about flexibility and resilience as well, but I, it was a whole nother level mm -hmm. of being flexible because mm -hmm. even with my kids, my mom was way more, you know, which is good. She was way more easy with them in terms of being dirty and that kind of thing, getting in the dirt. And I think with this, I've just learned even further just to be flexible chill and, out a little bit <laughs> yeah and that whole phrase like we'll figure it out because you can make yourself crazy worrying so mm -hmm. we say it all the time mm -hmm. we'll figure it out we'll figure it out i don't care how many times you have to say that to yourself <laughs> yeah i just same really just same. hang hang in there and just my my whole thing too is like not so much ostrich like stick my head in the sand it's mm -hmm. just put your head down and just to get through it you know and yeah. just focus on put one foot in front of the other and just getting through Hard times, easy times, whatever it is. Yeah, because COVID was not easy oh, for anybody Lord, yeah. in this world, right? Yeah. But the wedding industry, I think, was hit especially hard. That was, yeah. yeah, was, yeah. I mean, you remember how bad that was? Yeah, it was, that was terrifying. Yeah. One of the hardest things, because I, I, I personally started transitioning to something a little different. I don't know if you guys remember when a lot of the graduations or even like birthday celebrations, oh, yeah. like we started doing drive-by. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's, celebrations. Right. that's right. Yeah. Forgot all about that. Yeah. So they, huh. would, they would have like an arch in the driveway. Yeah. The See, that's a balloons. pivot right there. Yeah. yeah. Figure it out, Mikey. Figure it out. And, uh, <laughs> and then, I mean, people, people just got creative. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, what? I, when someone told me about that, I was like, what is that? So I was like, okay, I'll capture it, whatever you need. And then, um, so I was like, oh, it's a great idea because they don't have to step out of the car. Yeah. They are in the car and mm -hmm. then basically they kind of get to meet, you know, the, yeah. the, the, let's say it's a birthday celebration. They get to meet the birthday girl, whatever. And, and there was this one time where they actually even bought like um, boba teas oh. <laughs> for everybody on a rack and they just gave it out. It was, oh, awesome. wow. it was pretty awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's good to see how um, re resilient humans can be. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. in times like that. And they got your photos, right? So they yeah. had the memories they, exactly. recorded. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. That is a great idea. Super, I mean, people just- Couldn't they still do that? <laughs> they could still do that, but I think people are comfortable now. Yeah, yeah. of course. I've, I've of gotten course. really antisocial since COVID, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a fan of the drive-by. You drive, wanna do the drive-by. The drive-by <laughs> drive birthday. <laughs> New Year's Eve, though. Well, my birthday's New Year's Eve. That might get a little, little hairy, <laughs> a little messy. So maybe just nothing at all. Just leave me alone. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome, yeah, because because during COVID, it was like we all agreed it was one of the most difficult times. But even mm. like owning a, a business, even now, right? You'll have you know ups and down, ups and downs. Yeah. Sometimes, some months, even for us photographers, like December and January. Yeah. Yeah. Months, yeah. So like, it's it's like, brutal. <laughs> it's a work desert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just had a conversation with a photographer today. They sometimes reach out to me, and I was like, she was kind of like. You know, complaining a little bit because the summer was tougher. And I was yeah. like, what can you... He was asking me what she can do. I'm like, well, I mean, it is what it is. Like, you sometimes have to plan for the slow months and then work your butt off during the summer months because that's when you get most of your business. So it, it is just... It is what it is. Yeah. And me, I just have to kind of just save some money yeah. towards that tail end. Yeah. Um, it's tough. So for you guys, like, do you guys have, like, ups and downs in terms of the oh, market? Yeah. Oh, very yeah. Very seasonal. Yeah. It's very seasonal. Yeah. And we're also seeing because of all the talk of um, economics now, you know, with Possible the down- reception. A, 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 recession. Yeah, the downturn that, you know, that could come. Right. I think we're seeing people reticent to book. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's been, yeah, I feel like our spring is slow for some reason. Mm-hmm this year which never happens interesting so yeah we definitely have slower months than others though on regular i think it's just all part of the covid recovery Mm -hmm. i think you know it depends on what you do for a living to know how much that affects you or your everyday life um some people never even lost their jobs some people did yeah Yeah, they just either worked for home or just had a type of job or they just continued on i have many family members like that Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so um you know grocery store prices are crazy gas prices all that so you know most people are affected by that well i would say have to say everyone but i think unless you're in a particular industry you don't realize you know like chicken eggs <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean who would have thought it? i saw the funniest thing that i saw that they um it was something like um toilet paper and eggs were so cheap that we oh. used to throw them in our enemies yeah. oh yeah <laughs> you know like toilet papering toilet someone's paper. house yeah <laughs> so <laughs> she yeah. sent that to me last night oh. i was dying <laughs> oh my goodness we'll try to find that that image uh, posted <laughs> yeah. here, but um, I'll couple, send it to you. <laughs> yeah, send it to me. Uh, yeah, we just got a couple more questions for you guys, because um, I think it'll be interesting. Because I always ask this question for every one of my guests is like, so in terms of social media and having a website, um, how does that help you guys, and how do you guys approach social media for marketing? Well, I think, um, like you, it's a very, we have very visual business. Mm -hmm. You obviously as well. Um, I think it's really important. We get a lot of direct business, um, obviously from our website, but also from Instagram. Mm -hmm. And we're so appreciative of when professional photographers provide their photos to us. Yeah, thank you, Mikey. (laughs) We appreciate you. (laughs) I can't even tell you how important that is to our business model Mm -hmm. and you know, future business. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because we can take all the cell phone photos that we want mm-hmm. and then just not going to do it like professional. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you guys have a, an amazing website. Cause I, uh, you oh, know, thank you. Oh, thank you. It's very fast. Oh, that's think, good. Yeah, because I I, I'm always curious about like the speed of people's websites. Yeah. Sometimes when you go on some websites, I don't know if you have ever had um experiences when you go on a website it's kind of slow mm-hmm. yeah like i get frustrated I'm like oh yeah. yeah why can't i go to the next We're like tab? this day and age and it's still <laughs> what yeah. is this dialogue <laughs> yeah we have to shout out to um uh, our black um, roses. yeah black roses um they're a local business here in downtown that did our marketing um like we did a rebrand after nice. covid yeah. and they did the website for us That's, so they were wonderful mm-hmm. to work with them. it's amazing because it's it flows very well. It's very simple. Oh, yeah. we'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah. And it's not too, like, I, it's not, like, too much information. Mm. It just, I think it just gives enough to kind of tell, yeah. you, tell the clients what you guys are, are about, right? Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. But, yeah, like, I think it's super important. Yeah. Having a website. Yeah. And I like a lot of white space. Yeah. I think I really, like, and appreciated that design with a lot of white space and also because nobody reads too much you can't even get rid of people to read your emails sometimes oh my god don't <laughs> like, even get me as started I said in my previous <laughs> ASL <laughs> yeah so uh. you know I, I'm trying not to be wordy even in my emails mm-hmm. so. that, you know that's something I've learned over the years 
when even if I'm asking a question, I just ask one question. Yes. yes. Oh my I, god, we just, just have talking to, about that yeah. today. today. If I have multiple questions, most people they it's too much. Yeah, it's they like, ask they well, answer one at a time. That, but at that point, if you have multiple questions, the the question is when do you have time to talk on yeah. the phone? Yeah. <laughs> because this is going to take forever. If we go back and forth <laughs> yeah. one by one, and then you more than likely are going to ignore part of the question as it is. So yeah. let's just jump on the phone call, that, please. That's, yeah. that's so true. And and I get this question a lot from other vendors is, what happens when someone reach out, reaches out to you on Instagram and all they want is pricing? Yeah. Do you guys provide the price or are you guys trying to send them to your website? Um, we, well, I, cause I usually am the one answering the questions like on something like Instagram or if we have do an email, to be honest, I do like to give them a ballpark mm -hmm. because I mean, we always have a caveat, Yeah, you know, uh, photos are helpful yeah. example photos, which is can be a little time consuming, but we've collected a good set that this is centerpiece A, B and C. Nice. So I think it is important because if they feel that they can't afford it, mm -hmm. we tend we tend to fall on the high end side of yeah. things, and um, it's because of the product we use and our design. Yeah, so, totally. you know, I just kind of want to be upfront with people because we don't want to waste their time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. so yeah, I I'm okay with that. It's it doesn't get lengthy like a real proposal because then I okay now we need to either talk on the phone or I want to send you a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And now I prefer the phone. Yeah, it's quicker. Yeah. Yeah, just to even do a consultation over the phone or think, video call. And I think just, you know, with text, just like with texting, you know, a tone is communicated better yeah, over the phone agreed. where you can miss that in an email, you yeah. know, and you're really not getting either my point or I'm not getting your point. Yeah, yeah so. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that's great advice because I kind of do the same thing. I, I'll give them like a ballpark, like starting. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I do fall in like, for, for my business, it is a wide range because I offer photo and video so i do like to have them hop on the phone call if you have time yeah right but Agreed. if you want more information like if if the starting price is just kind of too generic for it and you want more information just fill up my contact form exactly and then yeah. i'll send you my brochure yeah. but i'd rather explain it over the phone because yeah. like, it get because they're they have a lot of questions yeah. anyways mm -hmm. right yeah. it's like oh what is this print release what is this copyright yeah like well let me just because I can't type everything. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know? And you're not going to read read most of it anyways. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, so seriously. And I got to be honest. Um, during COVID, because we did still do daily deliveries, and unfortunately, funerals. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, but um, yeah. I got lazy during and just like the first year after COVID, where I was doing too much emailing. And I really had to like go, hey, don't do that. You need to get on the phone with people, pick up the phone, even if it's just for a quick chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's like Mandy said, a lot is lost, I think, in just emailing tone. And sometimes you can appear like you don't want to use too many emojis and explanation <laughs> points either. You know what I mean? Like I have to back off my explanation <laughs> points. I do I too. Try to be enthusiastic and like but convey I, that. But you also sound like you have you, like you mainlined coffee this morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, like I, I sometimes look at my email. I'm like, man, yeah. you back off, dude. You're coming You're on too, too strong. Enthusiastic. <laughs> like every sentence ends in explanation <laughs> yeah. points. Like roll it back. Yeah. Roll it yeah, back yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, we. Oh, don't <laughs> worry. Okay, I'll actually pause here really quick. Okay. okay. Yeah, good. Okay, guys, sorry about that. We are back. Um, well, we just had a couple, uh, one more question, actually, uh, to kind of wrap this up. So in terms of, you know, like the business side of the floral industry, um, what's one thing that you really, really enjoy about your business? Um, I think the variety of flowers that we're seeing and other materials we're seeing um, come through the market with the f um, farmer florist types and the the small time farmers, um, also just the evolution of design mm -hmm. and the way people treat each other now, in general, just supporting each other. I really enjoy that a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, I enjoy being creative. Yeah. Like actually having the opportunity to be creative and work, and that has also transferred in the you know my life. So yeah, yeah. it's really opened up some doors for me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure having both of you guys on the podcast. Thanks for having us, Mikey. We appreciate Thank you, it. Mikey. Yeah, no problem. And uh, how can people connect with you guys? Well, they can find us on our Instagram at uh, The Nature of Things. And then our website is www.natureofthings.net. 
It's usually the best way. Um, phone too. Phone. Oh, forgot about the phone. I was just talking about <laughs> the phone. We do like and I the forgot. phone too. Yeah, feel free to share the number. Uh, if you for, like. I totally forgot. Nine five one two zero four two one four nine. You can give us a call anytime. Hit us up on Instagram or um, reach out on our website. Yeah, we have a contact um, mm -hmm. form on our website, yeah. and we get back with people usually. A couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. Depending. Yeah. Sometimes it's 24 hours. Depending on if job. it's a Monday or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, thank we'll, you. Again, guys, we'll share all their contact information, their phone number, their email on the description down below. 